Welcome. Uh, in today's short video, we're going to show how easy it is to use Tin Man Real Time to access um, X Plane's um, sensor data. Uh, we'll be sending a select set of X Plane sensor data uh, through UDP. Uh, we're on the same system, of course, um, but I'm going to show you how fast we can get it going in real time. Uh, when you download real time and you're either using it in trial mode or you've purchased it, um, you can easily just go to the online help here. Just click inside the application. Uh, this is an on, uh, the online help is an ongoing project for us, but at least today you can download uh, an Xplane file. Just bring it down. I've already got it on my system. Uh, I'll close the browser. And what you can do is um, we've already created the sensor data template maps for Xplane, and these are really very simple to do. It's just a little bit tedious when you have so many on one system. So anyway, I'm just going to bring them in. I'm going to load this Xplane sensors. Uh, there they all are. That's uh, 134 sensors, and uh, it's already uh, uh, listening on port 27018, uh, and that's specified here in the configure UDP source dialog. And I'm going to come back to this in a minute. Uh, but in a, in real time, uh, Tin Man real time, you add a new UDP source. There's no limit to the number of UDP data sources. This could come from multiple PCs or locations on the internet or wireless uh, uh, robotic systems. As long as it's delivered via UDP, we can listen for it on a port here locally. Um, and in this case, uh, we have 134 sensors. And, um, and that comes straight out of X-Plane. So this is X-Plane uh, 10.34, I think, or 10.36 that we're running. And in X-Plane, I'm just going to kind of migrate around. Uh, this is just an F-22 with some kind of neat logos on, uh, on the aircraft that we did. Uh, and uh, you can go into Settings, Data Input, Output, go to uh, Data Set. And you'll see the index 0 to 133 um, sensors um, that uh, X-Plane uh, will and can send data out uh, from. And uh, you specify the sensor that you want data values sent out through UDP by checking this far left box. And there, I'm not going to teach you how to use X-Plane. There's enough uh, a literature on that on the internet, and they've done a great job of making this easy to use. Uh, but you simply check the box that you want to send data out. In fact, if you want to see it on the screen, um, you can just do this uh, for gear and flaps number 14. You check that far right box, and then it appears on the screen. Um, so uh, anyway, that's the uh, area that we're going to send data out on. Now, if you notice, the ones that we're actually sending data out on, uh, as long as you've specified in Net Connections the uh, local port, we're running uh, Tin Man real time on the same PC as we're running Xplane. So you're going to use the traditional um, uh, self system IP address 127.0.0.1. And we've arbitrarily chosen 27018 as an, a port that we know is unoccupied and we can use. Uh, so we listen on that port. We're sending out data from X-Plane on 27018. And uh, we're listening for it on uh, 27018 over here. And you can see that the X-Plane sensors is 27018. We have 134 sensors. This right here is just a little bug that we put on the screen, um, uh, a little visual bug that we put on the screen that um, signifies a UDP source. And there would be one of those for every UDP source that you have loaded. We're not talking about UDP command targets in this particular video, but you can also send commands out from uh, Tin Man real time. There are a couple of controls to do that, and then you can automate that with our other product. Uh, but in this case, we're talking about sensors, and you can see something in particular if we just expand this dialog. Let me pull it up here um, and bring it out. Uh, you can see that uh, here are those 134 sensors, and again, we just did a one-click load of this project, and it brought each of those in. And this column here, sensor ID, corresponds to the index of the sensor that's being sent in X-Plane. So that's 0, 1, 2. So if we look at, let's just take three, for instance, speeds. We've checked that box here in X-Plane, so that means that data is coming out. And over here, uh, and of course, we see it over here. It's not only just a listing of speeds, but also the sub-elements that are uh, provided. So uh, indicated air speed, uh, expected air speed, I believe, uh, uh, true air speed, and then I think it's true ground speed. Uh, and these are in knots. 
Uh, so those are the four data values that come out through that one sensor with ID number three. And just to verify, what we can see here is that this in particular has a blue light um, that is uh, and an indicator of activity of about 20 data grams per second coming in on that sensor. And let's just take a look at uh, that data and see uh, what it's sending. We'll put that on the screen here and explain. And there we are. There's uh, the four values. There's actually a few more. Uh, we're only in this file. We've specified that uh, there are four uh, values. So we're picking up these first four sub-elements. Uh, in any case, excuse me, right here, uh, these first four sub-elements. Um, so now that we have that set up in real time, things get even easier and what we can do is what I'm what I'm going to do just to start out I'll show you two things one is the pitch roll gauge the extended pitch roll gauge you just drag it and drop it on the screen and then also stacked values stacked values is a really convenient control that allows us to simply if we just double click this let's just unpause this we'll have this so we'll get a little background sound here but we want the values to be uh, accurate and streaming um, Oh, and by the way, let's just show you one thing. On the speeds here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to turn this off uh, for that component. And if we just watch right here for speeds, this is going to slowly go down to zero. So now we have a gray light, and that is right because we just turned off this spigot, so those uh, uh, data values are no longer coming. And so I'm going to put that back on. So this becomes this dialog pane here of UDP source, a great indicator when you're building an interface of visualization of those data sensor values. This becomes very useful to know whether or not you've got a bad connection or whether there's data there and you're just not seeing it. Um, and so let's turn this back on and keep an eye on that uh, blue light there. Uh, and that should slowly come back to life. There we are. Okay, so it's coming back. And we get a little spike in the number of values, I think, because it was backed up a little bit. Uh, but in any case, let's um, uh, go ahead and turn X-Plane back on. Uh, so we're live over here. We're not paused. And what I'm going to do is show you the convenience of first this one. If you, with the stack value component, literally dragging and dropping it to the screen, double-clicking on it, specifying the UDP source. In this case, we're choosing X-Plane sensors. It's the only one we have set up. And these combo boxes for all the associated dialog properties box that pop up are automatically populated with the appropriate things. So when we select the UDP source, it automatically populates this combo box, which is the sensors of that source, with all of the sensors that, um, and so it makes it nice and easy for you to say, oh good, this is the one that I want. And in this case, what I want to do is, I don't know what the elements are for this, so I'm just going to specify X-Plane sensors, and let's just take a look at speeds and see what it has. And so what this does for us is it, it populates, automatically fills and creates this nice little single control that contains every element in that sensor. So we can do the same thing for this one here, joystick, aileron, elevator, and rudder. We see that it has three values, but uh, let's say we're not, uh, we're not quick with this interface down here. We just want to know what those things are. We just drag this to the screen, double click. We choose sensors, and we choose joystick, aileron, and there we are with that. And if I move my joystick, I should see, oh, we have to turn this on. Uh, we should see, there we are, we see those values changing. I'm uh, moving my joystick from left to right, and now forward and backward, and I'm turning the rudder as well. And so those are nice, uh, uh, helpful controls. And you notice that as we're running here, uh, in fact, simulating, I just double click, or excuse me, single click these uh, radar icons up here. That just uh, it makes everything live here. So this will update the screen relative to the data that's being received. Um, but let's set up this pitch roll gauge. I'm going to double click on this, and we're going to specify the sensor's UDP source. And for the pitch component, we're going to choose uh, it's number 17, I think. Yeah, pitch roll headings, and we'll choose pitch for roll. It's number 17. We'll choose roll. And for heading, it's uh, same, 17, but heading. We'll do magnetic. And then for the speed, we'll choose speeds, and we'll use the, uh, let's just use airspeed for this one. And then for, <coughs> excuse me, the altitude, we need lat lawn altitude, and that's number 20, and we'll choose uh, feet above ground level. Now, the one thing before I close this that you'll notice, and I'm not going to spend time on this video I'm talking about, not yet, is the uh, AIB, which is AI Builder System Input ID. 
if AI Builder was running, you'd see that it's detected, and uh, and you can actually associate uh, a an input ID in AI Builder uh, with this particular uh, sub element of this sensor. So this data would go directly to simultaneously and live to AI Builder, so you can actually see things uh, your uh, your uh, intelligent system that you're developing, if you are developing one uh, or working with one. Uh, you can see those values working in real time. <clears throat> and we'll show that in another video. Let's choose OK for now. And we can see that uh, this is automatically, you get some green lights here. Uh, the five individual elements of this uh, gauge are set. And what I'm going to do is just uh, start lifting off. And let's just keep an eye on this. Actually, let's do one more thing. Let's do a line chart. Uh, and uh, line charts are live uh, uh, living things as well. And we can just double click on this while it's live. Let's add uh, one other thing, uh, something that would be uh, interesting. Uh, why don't we do um, uh, airspeed? Uh, uh, let's do aileron, actually, and we'll show how that's changing uh, as we do it. We'll make that a red line. We'll show that in the legend. And then we'll do one other for pitch, and we'll make, so we go aileron, uh, elevator, now we're using 11 on this one, I think, and we'll choose navy blue. And so, and we want, I think, minus 2 to 2 for those. I think they go minus 1 to 1. And uh, make that a 1, and we'll make this a point 2. And moving right along, if I, I think that, yep, so we get some activity there. Okay, so, uh, and right now, I'm, I don't think that I'm sending 11. Let me just double check here. Yeah, so 11 isn't on, and that's why we're not getting a reading for 11. Let's go over here and turn 11 on. And we go back in over here and check that box. And we should get a nice blue line now. There we are. Now we have a red and a blue line, one for pitch. And if we just look at the aircraft, if we just watch this aircraft while we watch the gauge here, <clears throat> Let's do it this way, and I'm going to pitch uh, up and down, or excuse me, the other way, down and up. You can see the blue line in the chart changing, and uh, likewise, if I do ailerons, I'll go left and I'll go right. Okay, so you can see those functioning too. Um, and this is an interesting way to represent things, because if we look at our pitch roll gauge, I'm just going to move things over here so we can see everything on the screen. If we focus on these two gauges, we see that I'm actually moving the controls, but the aircraft is not uh, uh, pitching left or rolling left or right or pitching forward or backward. Um, and that's because, of course, we're not in the air. But it's neat that we can see the um, actions of the pilot or uh, the simulated pilot, of course. Uh, we can see that live now through this uh, real time chart. Anyway, so those are uh, some components. I'm going to go ahead and lift off just to complete the task, and let's keep an eye on this uh, this extended pitch roll gauge here. And um, we'll go ahead and put the flaps down, uh, and probably don't need much with this aircraft. And then uh, we will uh, ramp up the speed and release the brakes.
direction, and I'm just using my uh, extended pitch roll gauge to get in that direction. I'm headed west now, and I'm almost there. Uh, it's a good thing I don't really fly F-22s. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see if we can get in that direction. And there we're now going south. Anyway, it's difficult to fly aircraft from the uh, left flank here, but um, you can see that uh, with these just these basic components, uh, we are getting uh, pretty good values. I'm going to reduce this down here so you can see more of the screen. So here is our pitch roll gauge. Uh, here is the chart. And by the way, these are flexible in real time. We can extend this out, and um, uh, we can change the background color. Uh, we can do whatever we'd like to it. Okay, so I'm going to stop there, and that's our uh, getting up and running with uh, X-Plane. And remember, just simply go to the uh, online help and click on the configure an EDP data source and download that file. And uh, you'll be up and running with X-Plane if you have it uh, within, should be uh, 20 seconds or less. All right, thank you very much.